Okay, we are on section 5.4, Newton's second law. Let's uh, share the PowerPoint slides. And uh, Newton's first law explains what happens to an object when no forces act on it. It maintains its original motion, either uh, it remains at rest, if it was at rest, or it moves in a straight line with constant speed, it was already moving in a, a straight line. Uh, Newton's second law answers the question of what happens to the object when one or more forces act on it. Uh, so in the figure we see a, a mass on a tabletop or something, there's a force applied to it. Imagine pushing a block of mass M across a frictionless horizontal surface. The horizontal force F on the block moves the block with an acceleration of A. Applying a force twice as great on the same block accelerates the block with, uh, the, the acceleration doubles. So the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force acting on it and inversely proportional to the mass. So the acceleration is proportional to the force. So, and the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass. So formally, if we look at uh, Newton's second law, when viewed from an inertial reference frame, the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and inversely proportional to its mass. So the acceleration is proportional to the sum of all the forces on it and is inversely proportional to the mass. So if the mass increases, if the mass increases, the acceleration goes down. If the mass decreases, the acceleration goes up. And of course, since it's directly proportional, if the force, if the sum of the forces goes up, the acceleration goes up. If the sum of the forces decreases, the acceleration decreases. Now, we're gonna study this in detail when we do uh, the, the Atwood machine. The Atwood machine is a beautiful display of Newton's second law. Okay? So here, that, here we're using a proportionality symbol. The A is proportional to some of the F, some of the forces over mass. This is it. Uh, we can look at that. You probably heard force equals MA. The sum of the forces equals the mass times the acceleration. Um, so this is Newton's second law. The force is equal to the mass times acceleration. Or the, it's also the the uh, the second law. The acceleration due to a net force acting on the object um, is the net force is a, it's the vector sum of all forces acting on an object. Um, the total force, the resultant force, the unbalanced force is the net force. Many forces may be acting on an object, but only one acceleration of the object will occur. Now we have the components of the equ equation. The sum of the forces in the x direction equal uh, the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. The sum of the forces in the y direction equals the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. And the sum of the forces in the z equal the mass times acceleration in the z direction. Now these are three, not three different accelerations. Those three, the ax, ay, and az, all sum to give you a resultant acceleration, you only end up with one acceleration. Okay, let's take a quick quiz. Um, an object experiences no acceleration. Which of the following cannot be true for the object? A single force acts on the object. No forces act on an object. Forces act on the object, but the forces cancel. I'm going to read that again. An object experiences no acceleration. So which of the following cannot be true for the object? A single force acts on the object. No forces act on the object. Or forces act on the object, but the forces cancel. Well, the answer is that it's the, which cannot be true is a single force acts on an object. If a single force acts on an object and there's no repelling force to to prohibit it from moving then then you're going to get acceleration now let's look at the cases where 
if, hardly ever will you you get no forces acting on an object uh, even if you in in free fall you have gravitational you have the gravitational force acting on an object um but let's this computer that's on this desktop that I'm talking into, forces are acting on it. There's a gravitational force holding the the um, computer to the tabletop, and there's also the 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 uh, normal force holding the of the of the table holding the computer up. If there were, if that table weren't there, the computer would fall to the ground. So there there are forces acting on it. Um, but the force is canceled now this is a case where the where the computer that i mentioned is still what about what about a skydiver a skydiver may may uh not be accelerating in other words when he jumps out of an airplane is in free fall there's the gravitational force pulling him down but later on we're, we're going to learn that he he can reach a terminal velocity where he's no longer accelerating he's going into constant speed there's no more acceleration because the sum of the forces cancel in other words his downward gravitational force is equal to the uh air resistance force that he's feeling so he's falling he's moving but there's no the sum of the forces on him equals zero um okay let's do another quick Quiz. You push an object initially at rest across a frictionless floor with a constant force of, for a time interval of delta t, resulting in a final speed of v for the object. You then repeat the experiment, but with a force that is twice the same, with a force that is twice as large. What time interval is now required to reach the same speed? So you're, you're pushing with a greater force twice as large so is it four times delta t two times delta t delta t or delta t divided by two delta t divided by four well if you're if you double the force you only need half the speed so d delta t divided by t is the, is what you need to reach the same speed now let's talk about units of force um the si unit of force is 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 the newton one newton equals one kilogram times meters per second squared now typically the, what we use here uh is gravitational acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared and you multiply that by whatever mass and you'll come up with newton so a one kilogram mass times uh 9.8 meters per second squared gravitational acceleration is going to equal 9.8 newtons okay now in the english unit we use a a pound one pound equals one one slug the unit of mass in the um, u.s customary system is the the slug and one slug um the, the unit is is uh, 32 feet per second squared. Um, so one slug times the gravitational acceleration of 32 feet per second squared is would be equal to th uh, 32 pounds. Okay. Um, so let's. Oops. Uh, one moment. So the, an approximation, one Newton is approximately a quarter of a pound. I don't know that we'll use that much, but he, the author references it. Um, okay. Uh, now, if you read the opening of the chapter, you read about the catch an egg uh, game in the back backyard. So why do you move your hands backward when you catch the egg in the opening storyline. Imagine holding your hands stiffly and not moving them as you catch the egg. The egg will hit your hand and be brought to rest in a very short time interval. The magnitude of acceleration of the egg will be large. Um, it'll require a large force from your hand sufficient to break the egg. If you move your hands backward and slowly bring the egg to rest, 
the acceleration magnitude will be smaller and the smaller force means that the egg doesn't break. Throwing an egg into a, into a sheet is similar. When the egg strikes the sheet, the sheet moves in the same direction in response, bringing the egg to a sl slower velocity over a relatively long distance. We're gonna learn later on that this has to do with impulse. Uh, so remember that the, the impulse is force times time, uh, force times delta time. Uh, we won't concern ourselves with that right now. Let's look at some example. Let's look at an example on the accelerating hockey puck. So a hockey puck having a mass of 0.3 kilograms slides on the frictionless horizontal surface of an ice rink. Two hockey sticks strike the puck simultaneously, exerting the forces on the, the puck shown in the figure. The force F1 has a magnitude of 5 newtons and is directed at 20 degrees below the x-axis. The force F2 has a magnitude of 8 newtons and its direction is 60 degrees above the x-axis. Determine both the magnitude and direction of the puck's acceleration. Well, let's conceptualize this. We study the figure. And using your expertise in vector addition from chapter three, you predict that the approximate direction of the net force vector on the puck, the acceleration of the puck will be in the same direction. So just from, it's going to be up to the, about 25 to 30 degrees above the uh, X axis is just my guess. I may be wrong. Uh, let's categorize this. Because we can determine a net force and we want an acceleration, this problem is categorized as one that may be solved using Newton's second law. Uh, later, we will formally introduce the, the particle under a net, for net force analysis model to describe the situation as this one. Okay? So let's analyze. Well, let's find the component of the Net force acting on the puck in the x direction. Uh, so we have uh, f of x. f in the x direction is equal to f1x plus f2x. So it's f1 cosine theta and f2 cosine phi. Uh, you'll see both of those are uh, adjacent to the angle, the, the uh, uh, adjacent to the 60 degree and adjacent to the uh, 20 degree. So now let's find the components of the net force acting on the puck in the y direction. Okay, we have uh, fy is equal to f1y plus f2y equals f1 sine theta and f2 sine phi. Now you'll see that the uh, we're going to end up with a f1y in the positive direction. We're going to end up with a f2y in the negative direction. Um, so Let's uh, use Newton's second law in component form to find the x and y components of the puck's acceleration. Um, the sum of the forces in the x direction are f cosine theta plus f, f1 cosine theta plus f2 cosine phi, and the acceleration divided, that net force divided by m will give us our ax, and the same in the y direction. Um, the sum of the forces in the y direction divided by the mass is F1 sine theta plus F2 sine theta divided by M, the mass. And let's substitute our numerical values. 5 newtons cosine minus 20 plus 8 newtons times cosine 60. We'll get, uh, divided by 0.3 kilograms, you get 29 meters per second. And in the... Acceleration in the y, uh, 5 newton sine minus 20 plus 8 newton sine of 60 divided by 0.3 kilograms, you're going to end up with 17 meters per second. And if we take this, the square root of the sum of the squares, we end up with 34 meters per second squared. Now, um, that, let's see. Um, Okay, there, oh, there it is. Um, to get the, the angle, we take the arc tangent of the uh, acceleration in the y direction and the divided by the acceleration in the x direction, we get 
the inverse tangent of 17 over 29 and we get 31 degrees. Uh, so what did I say? I said between 25 and, I forget what I said. Uh, I may have said 25 and 30, it's actually 31 degrees. Okay. Um, now the vectors in the figure can be added graphically to check the reasonableness of our answer because the acceleration vector is along the direction of the resultant force. A drawing showing the resultant force vector helps us check the validity of the answer. Uh, okay. It's, suppose three hockey sticks strike the puck simultaneously with two of them exerting the forces shown in the figure. The result of the three forces is that the hockey puck shows no acceleration. What must be the components of the third force? Well, if there's no, if there is zero acceleration, the net force acting on the puck must be zero. Therefore, the three forces must cancel. The components of the third force must be of equal magnitude and opposite sign compared to the components of the net force applied to the first two forces so that all the components add to zero. Therefore, the F3x would equal uh, minus 8.7 newtons and F3y would equal minus F.2 newtons. This is kind of uh, the equivalent of finding the equivalent uh, in your vector uh, vector lab that you did last week. And this ends our discussion of Newton's uh, second law. We will next discuss the gravitational force and weight.